This week's project is this super old table. It was given to me from a house that was being flipped. I just love it, and I'm going to try to keep its old charm. In case you're wondering whatever happened with the bench, I'm still working on it. I tore it apart, and then I put it to get back together, and I think I'm probably going to tear it apart again. So stay tuned for part two. As usual, I get busy cleaning the piece, and I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning that I keep in a spray bottle. And then, of course, I am rinsing it with water. Can you believe how much dirt is coming off of this piece? Wow. <laughs> it's really dirty. And then I kind of skipped where I sanded it. I don't know why. I thought I was filming, I guess. But a lot of the paint um, really just chipped off in this and it made a black powder. Man, oh man. But we're going to freshen this little sweetheart up. I know you may not be able to see the, see the detail in it, but I'm making it sound like really romantic and everything. But I see what it's going to be because I have a vision using some Iron Orchid Designs paint inlays. And I'm super excited about that. It is going to be really sweet. I'm going to be using Annie Sloan's Primer Red. I'm still working on this can that Annie was so kind to send to me to give a try. I think it's the perfect color for this little table and the plans that I have for it with the paint inlays as well. I have my table upside down on a Lazy Susan to get started. I paint the insides of it first just to make it a little easier. And I actually end up painting the underside of this table, which is something I don't usually do. I choose some of the elements from the Petite Fleur paint inlay set in pink. It also comes in red, which is just as beautiful. I was considering using pink paint and the red inlay, but I already had the pink package open, so I decided to go for that. So I'm cutting these apart so that I can apply them to the legs. One leg at a time, I apply a second coat and then apply the paper that I cut with the paint side down. You'll know you can feel the paint on it and also um, the, the paint, the color of it is a little more intense and brighter. So you'll know that's the side to apply to the paint. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it just to make sure that it's kind of even there and just using my hand and flattening it out. And again, since I can't find my mister bottle, I'm just using a wet paper towel and just kind of getting the wrinkles out and wetting that just to make sure that I have good adhesion with my paint. For the top of the table, I decide to use Dixie Belle's Sandbar. It's kind of a nice vintage-y, creamy, tan color. I think it's just perfect for this. I 
I left the inlays on the legs to dry while I'm working on the top. It's really hard to be patient to wait, but I'm applying a second coat of paint and also I have to cut, I, I put the paint on and then I remembered I have to cut in order to match this. I'm using a different inlay for the top. I'm using another inlay from the spring collection called Lattice Rose and I just think it's gorgeous. It reminds me of old wallpaper and little hint, you're gonna be seeing it on the next video coming up, which is the Spring Renew Challenge. This is part of the Unique Antique Challenge and it's hosted by Crystal at the Crafty Creech and Margie from the Asking Spot. That one's coming to you on April 28th. I remember at the last minute that I'm matching this one up, so I have to trim the excess off the edges. But I'm just laying it down in the paint just like I did with the other one. So I'm trimming off that other edge to match this up and I have it the wrong way so I have to trim the other edge off. Trying to work quickly so my paint doesn't start drying on me but I think I'll be okay. And same as before, I just make sure that I wet the paper and it separated a little, so I'm keeping it together. But inlays really are pretty simple. They might seem complicated, but if you just kind of stick to the guidelines, use chalk mineral paint or chalk paint just so that you have uh, that the right surface, you can use it with an all-in-one but it's a whole different set of rules and it's really off-label usage. I'm just cutting a little extra. I'm trying not to use too much of this paper because for my next project I'll be able to get a second use out of this and I want to keep it pretty much intact because the area I want to use it in is a little longer. So I'm trying to be very evasive <laughs> but you'll see. let those dry overnight and they can be removed immediately as soon as they're dry you don't have to let them sit overnight that just hurt you know fit my schedule and it doesn't hurt anything to let them dry overnight so now I'm just taking a damp paper towel and re-wetting that paper I'm kind of paying attention to the edges of the paper because it's kind of already bonded we're not doing that we're just making sure the paper's wet so that it doesn't tear and stick dry into our project so um, you can see there's a little bit of paint that needs touched up on it or maybe not I kind of might like that peeking through I'm not a hundred percent sure design wise you know what I want the final look to be it's just kind of growing on me as it goes <laughs> but i love this little sweet table i do have something in the back of my mind that i want to do so i'm getting all four of these legs um, with the inlays removed and i am laying them right side up so they dry so i can use them again just remember when i use this paint that they're going to kind of take on that background paint so if i lay that down in white paint you'll see the red around it not so much for the top because I did use a neutral color. So I'll probably use that color again the next time or something very similar. So I'm doing the same thing with the top. I'm going over that seam especially. 
and the edges and then remember I added those little pieces on the edges so I'm gonna remove those first and they're coming off nicely I know you didn't get to see that one but you'll get to see a good look at it here so I just continue just making sure the whole thing is wet so it releases well and especially around those edges just so I get it to start nicely That is such a satisfying um, thing to watch whenever you peel up the inlay and get that beautiful image. You know, at first I, I looked at it and I thought it looked a little, um, just not a solid image, but this is just perfect. I think these are meant to look like vintage wallpaper, therefore they're not um, kind of solid, they look more worn. But the more I look at this table, I think the next step is becoming really clear to me. I just hope I can make it happen. I continue with the last piece. And here we go. Like I said, so satisfying. I just love this part. I think paint inlays are my favorite thing of IOD products because they're just, you can just use your imagination. Oh, is that not gorgeous or what? Now I want to show you, see where the seam was? There is a definite gap there. So what I'm doing is just taking a regular wet paintbrush. There's nothing on this but water. And I am just touching it. And because this is a water-based paint, it's reactivating that paint. So this is why it's important that you seal that um, so that if it does get water on it or more water-based paint, that it doesn't muddy up your image. Water-based as in a sealer. I'll explain that a little bit more later, but right now what I'm doing is mixing up some fast cast. I usually use amazing casting, amazing casting resin, but um, they were out of it, so I decided to try fast cast, and I actually like it a lot. So um, it's the same process, just mis mixing equal parts of um, part A and part B, and mixing it together, and then pouring it in the mold and it hardens in about 10 minutes. Just to note, FastCast didn't come with any cups or anything to mix it. 
So I got these from Amazon. They're silicone and you just clean them out. They're a lot easier to pour out of. It looks and feels like it's ready to come out, but I don't think it's quite ready. It's really funny how the middle hardens up before the little edges do. You would think that would harden up first, but um, I'm gonna let it sit for a few more minutes and give it another try. I wanna get it out before it's too hard and that way it's still a little bit flexible. Once it's out of the mold, you can see that it's flexible enough to go around that curve. So I'm just gonna take some wood glue. Um, this is Tight Bond Quick and Thick and I'm just gonna put it directly on the table. I usually put it on the mold, but since this is a flat uh, solid surface, it would be easier just to do this because I am going to reinforce it with some brad nails too. Um, this does kind of come off of that ledge just a little bit, so I just wanted the glue on the, the part it would be touching. No point in having it on the part that's hanging down on the backside. So I usually use uh, jewelry pliers to hold the little tiny nails with so I can get them pounded in. And then I will come back in with a nail set when I'm done to disguise them. As you see, each segment is not as long as that table end, but these molds are designed to go end to end. While I'm waiting for my last segment to dry, I am taking it outside and I'm using some clear coat in matte and I'm spraying that top. So do you remember when I said that you didn't want to get this wet um, with a water-based paint or sealer? So, um, it's recommended that you do a clear coat before you use any water-based sealer. And I find it just as easy to use the clear coat mat. You can mix half and half your water sealer and water, but I didn't have success with that. So I just choose the easy way and use that spray. Then I can do whatever I want on there. So you see how this mold goes end to end and I just cut it because it's still flexible enough and soft enough out of the mold. I think the bottom is an excellent spot to put another paint inlay. While I wait for that to dry, I come back in with the sandbar color again and paint my molding. I do get a little paint on the legs, but I'll come back and touch that up when I'm done. In total, I put two coats on. As I mentioned before, sometimes paint inlays can be a little challenging. Here's one of those moments. So I tried to put the already used once inlay on the bottom and it just didn't work for me. I don't know whether my paint was too not wet enough or the fact that the paint is pretty dark, um, that it kind of swallowed up the, the image. I'm not exactly sure, but I will tell you that I tried twice and failed twice. So, you know, my other ones worked out fine. I'm just gonna let this detail go. So I just paint it in and move on. I sand the top of the table with a 220 grit sandpaper. That gets rid of all the places where there were wrinkles and just smooths out the surface. It also lends itself to that faded look of the wallpaper too, and just kind of gives it a little bit of a distressed look. So I use Easy Peasy Spray Wax and I spray the top of the table and also all the molding and the legs. And then I come back in with black wax. I usually would use uh, the Van Dyke Brown or the Grunge Gray, but since uh, the, the table was black originally 
and some of that got uh, distressed, wet distressed off. Um, I'm just deciding to go with this black and I'm kind of glad I did. I really like the way it looks. So I'm just applying it with a small brush in all those detail areas and then wiping it back. And in any areas where I feel like I have too much and it's too dark, then I can come back in with the clear wax and wipe it back a little. Remember what our little table looked like before? We'll take a look at it now. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this content, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Find us on the web at statementdesigns.org and on social media as Statement Designs. And as always, stay well.